Over the past three quarters of a century, the automobile, the truck, and the tractor have brought tremendous social, economic, and technological advances wherever they've been introduced. And Ford has been in the vanguard of that peaceful revolution. During the year 1903, 88 new makes of automobiles were introduced in the United States. But this one was different. This was Henry Ford's car, and it was destined to become a symbol of mobility for decades to come. Right from the beginning, Fords changed our lives. They bore our loads, brought us transcontinental friends, and gave us new riddles of courtship. And Mr. Ford's assembly line started it all. came upon a world divided by culture, distance, and time, where even cities were separate cultures, and where the other side of the mountain was an all-day ride. rises on lands in which easy mobility is seen as a kind of right, where the lifelines of transportation tie us together and help satisfy our needs. It is a fact that, in one way or another, few lives have remained untouched by Mr. Ford's vision. Our working, our building, our concept of distance, the contours of our cities, all have been shaped by the world of Ford.
shutters as it serves up the raw materials that begin a new day's production cycle. the world over. Machines build and serve other machines in a way that could hardly have been imagined at the turn of the century. Henry Ford's vision that men and machines should interact with machinery providing efficiency and volume and people providing skill and intelligence. From Flat Rock, Michigan to County Cork, Ireland to Auckland, New Zealand, Hundreds of thousands of Ford men, women, and machines mold, polish, rivet, stamp, grind, hoist, steam, paint, and assemble an unending stream of products. shift, a break in the rhythm of the day. And there are as many traditions for observing those breaks as there are countries in the world of Ford. From Pinochle in Dearborn to Whist in England, to ancient board games in New Zealand, to dominoes in Brazil, spirits are refreshed and friendships renewed. of a century of experience. The pride and quality engineered and built into the first Ford car is reflected thousands of times each day in hundreds of places throughout the world. Crates bearing the familiar name carry everything, from exhaust manifolds to body panels to electronic ignition systems all bound for faraway places. 
This complex chain of components is part of a global manufacturing and assembly system. Tens of thousands of parts gradually take the shape of cars, trucks, vans and tractors, all destined for the markets of the world. An LTD sedan for a doctor in France, a tractor for a farmer in Canada, a station wagon for a school in California, an unending caravan for a world on wheels. take our mobility for granted, of course. We measure distances in time rather than miles. But Ford products do more than just move people and things. They handle an endless variety of needs in a surprising number of ways. Malaysian rubber plantation, a Ford van serves as a mobile bank for workers far from the nearest village. While in Sweden, ingeniously designed machines cut and haul an entire harvest of trees with Ford power. Halfway around the world, in Brazil, a sugarcane crop that used to take weeks to harvest is now completed in hours with Ford trucks and tractors. Thousands of miles to the north, on the central Mexican plateau, mountains of earth, rock and cement are moved by 700 Ford trucks. rugged land, a spectacular engineering project is underway as man and machine together build the fourth largest dam in the world. It is the business of scientists and engineers to find a better way as one idea leads to another. The design for a better electronic ignition system may unexpectedly provide a technical breakthrough for tomorrow's space system. In the world of the designer, practical needs tempered with a touch of whimsy yield taste and style. Ideas are things of line and contour. There is no function that cannot be made pleasing to the eye. That point is 12.52 down. This greenhouse area would look a lot nice and sleeker with a fastback. If we go into the fastback, I think it's going to start looking like a 2 plus 2.
final test is utility. How well it works. How safe it is. For every hour spent on design, a hundred are spent in testing, analyzing, perfecting. To test performance and quality, laboratories become make-believe worlds for the endless exercise of machines. never stops. In North America, Brazil, Belgium, vehicles are made to perform under the most demanding conditions. Only when a car or truck is pushed to its limits can engineers fully measure its strength, weaknesses, and capabilities. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Engine, transmission, brakes, suspension, carburation, steering. The components must work together. The ultimate test is the marketplace, where product and consumer come together. Where the dealer becomes spokesman, not only for the product, but for all those who created it. Someone helping you, folks? Yeah, I think the truck that we should be discussing is an F-250. Then have the very nice cassette radio in with UKW and stereo. And the radio is already in the car. Oh, that's nice. It's a real good package, and I think it'll do just the job you're looking for. We're dropping the 78 Ford pickup in a free fall. To prove a point, Ford means business in big trucks. Now Ford announces the CL9000. Punta de un cerro, el pickup Ford F100. Mustang, an exciting way to get from where you are to where you want to be. Some things are designed for the way they move. Feeling free, feeling free. My freewheeling Ford is TNT. Today, the average family has 2.2 children. The escort can comfortably carry 4.2 people. This year, when you step out on the town, don't just drive. Take off in the 1978 Thunderbird, the new designer series of Continental Mark V. It's a month of tradition. European spirit, Ford Cortina. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Ah, here's the Ford. Few things have stood the test of time better than the automobile. It is an object of pride, a reflection of its owner, and often as pampered and polished as any royal carriage. From the Model T of yesterday to the Fiesta of today, Ford has always built a car for the time.
here in Spain, near the city of Valencia, fiestas are produced at a huge new manufacturing complex, and components are produced at 15 other European Ford locations. But Ford's concerns range far beyond its factories and its products. In remote areas of Latin America, in Argentina, and on the plains of Mexico, Ford and its dealers are building schools where none existed before. For some families, it will be the first generation of literacy. In Britain, an ecological program sponsored by Ford made it possible for teams of young people to dredge and clean many village ponds restoring them to their original Elizabethan beauty. And in Mexico, Ford and its dealers have co-sponsored a farm training program, sending instructors into the field to teach such basic agricultural techniques as soil maintenance, pest control, grafting, and plant nutrition. Because, very frankly... The In the United States, the College Roundtable program brings teachers, students, and Ford executives together to improve understanding between the business and academic communities. It's uh, becoming typical. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we're getting together here, to, uh, to exchange attitudes and ideas. Let's see where we have common ground, where we disagree and why. And in Buenos Aires, Ford of Argentina sponsors the Henry Ford Technological School, providing technical and academic training to hundreds of young people of high school age. Half of those trained in Ford programs will ultimately be employed by the company, and the other half will find employment in similar technologies, benefiting their local and national economies. While Ford interests are worldwide, its roots are in Dearborn and Detroit. In partnership with 50 other companies, Ford created Renaissance Center, an office, shopping, and hotel complex that has rejuvenated Detroit's downtown riverfront. Far from the highways and freeways, thousands of miles in space, Ford satellites provide vital links in worldwide communications, relaying messages and beaming down weather information. There are, in fact, more Ford-built communications satellites than those of any other private enterprise. They are a product of the same Ford technical know-how that designed and maintains NASA's Houston Mission Control Center, focal point for America's manned space flight program. The journey from the Model T to the satellite took only three generations, and it all started with an idea in the mind of a farm boy named Henry Ford. An idea that evolved into a global enterprise that has provided products, work, and a way of life for millions of people. It's a story that is still evolving, as Ford Motor Company and its nearly half million employees develop new designs, new technologies, and new materials to meet the needs of a constantly changing world.